cups and pleasure day after day. But when we reach the kingdom of glory, trials of earth will vanish away. After the shadows, there will be celebrations. After the frown, the frown, the soul cheering, soul cheering smile. Cling to the Savior, the Savior, love and forever. your silver and your gold. You may pile up all the riches that this old world can hold, but I'd rather have my Savior and with Him firmly stand, for I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His blessed commands. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. You may talk about your riches, your diamonds and your pearls. You may gain the wealth for ages of this and all the worlds. But the Savior is more precious, with Him I'll take my stand. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His blessed command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. There is one thing I can boast of, salvation from the fall. I'm an heir to wealth and glory, my Father owns it all. That is why I'm shouting happy and go at His command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His blessed command. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. I want to be ready to meet Him by and by. I want to be ready to meet Him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like Him and do His blessed commands. For I want to be ready to meet Him in the glory land. Uh, magandang gabi mga kapatid. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon brethren. Kung saan man kayo naroon sa ating mga kakabsat, JT Locos Norte, Cagayan, etc. Na ibang karabi, katakay amin, kakabsat sa ating mga kaigsoonan. Maayong gabi sa inyong tanan, maigsoon sa ating mga katugangan sa Bicol Region. Diyos marahay na banggi sa Indugabos at sa ating mga kapatid, kaibigan sa Pangasinan, masanto sa labi, at si Kayon, amin. At dyan sa may Carabao Island, sa San Jose Romblon, isla de Carabao na walang Carabao, na pangamay nakita ang Carabao doon, mayad nga gabi sa inyong tanak. At dito po galing sa amin, sa lugar ng Angeles City, mga kapampangan, may pabingi kayo ko nga. Kung kayo po ay uh, Indonesian, salamat malam. At kung po ay Malaysian, salamat petang. Hindi pala pareho po yan mga pati. So our topic for tonight are the arguments used to prove that Jesus 
is not God. Ito pong ating pag-aaralan sa gabing ito ay ang pagmamatwid na si Kristo ay hindi raw Diyos. There are churches who believe and teach that Jesus is not God. Either is only a man or he was created by God. Yung po mga katuruan ng iba't iba mga, mga iglesia o minsan na si Kristo raw po tao lamang o si Kristo ay nila lang ng Diyos. Yung po ang makikita nating itinuturo nila. Number one argument, ang unang pagmamatwid, Jesus is son of man, therefore he is just a man. Sa so, unang pagmamatwid na ginagamit nila, si Jesus ay anak ng tao, kaya sa po'y tao lang. Yun po ang kaya ng argument. Well, there is um, a seed of truth in that. Son of man means your father is a man, and therefore you are a man. So when the Bible uses the term son of man, it just simply means you are a man. Ang katagang anak ng tao ay nangangahulga ng tatay mo tao. So ikaw ay tao. In other words, ikaw ay tao. Ito pa yung sa Biblia. For instance, uh, Ezekiel, the term son of man was used uh, 90 times. When God refers, referred to Ezekiel as the son of man. Sa aklat po ni Ezekiel, siyam na pong beses ginamit ang katagang anak ng tao. For instance, bilang sa Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1, And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. God is talking to Ezekiel. And he referred to him as son of man. In other words, Ezekiel was a man. He was a son of man. Also on Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So, ginagamit talaga yung katagang anak ng tao para, sa, para tukuin ng isang tao, ang isang tao. Tinatawag, ginagamit ng katagang son of man para tukuin ng isang tao. So, when Jesus used the term son of man, for himself, like Ezekiel, he was a man. But people would, would do not believe that Jesus God argues that when Jesus used the term son of man to refer to himself, just like Ezekiel, he was just a mere man. Ibig sabihin, ang pagmamatid nila na gamitin ng Panginoon ng katagang anak ng tao, katulad lang siya ni Ezekiel na tao lang. That is their argument. That's, yun ang kailang pagmamatwin. Ito ba yun, mga kapatid? Is that true? That when Jesus used the term son of man, he was merely a man and therefore, he was not God. So, nang gamitin ang Panginoon ng katagang anak ng tao, hindi siya Diyos, kundi tao lang. Yung kailang, yung kailang argument. Pero hindi totoo yan. When Jesus referred to himself as son of man, he said, the son of man. Is not a son of man, he is the son of man. So it was used in a different way. Ito yung ginamit sa ibang paraan. That when Jesus used the son of man to refer to himself, he meant he is the Messiah. Siya yung inihintay nilang tagapagligtas. At hindi lang siya tao. Tignan natin. Sa Matthew 16 verse 27, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He will reward each according to His work. Yung po sinabi sa uh, Matthew 16 verse 27, Matthew 25 verse 31, referring to the same event, Son of Man with all His glory. In other words, what kind of glory? The glory of the Father, that means the glory as God. When Jesus returns for the second and last time for the judgment day, he is coming as God, not a man. Hindi siya tao. Siya darating bilang Diyos, kanyang buong kalalatihan kanya. So, son of man doesn't mean he is merely a man. It meant that Jesus was the Messiah. Siya yung iniintay nilang tagapagligtas. And the Son of Man, Jesus, 
was not merely a man. A, an ordinary man is born from his parent, from his mother, Diuba. But Jesus came from heaven. Hindi lang siya galing ipinanganak. He came from heaven. He descended from heaven. Tignan natin sa John chapter 3, verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. If Jesus, the Son of Man, is in heaven, present tense, he is not a man. No flesh and blood can enter the kingdom of heaven. So, makating sa langit. Walang ganon. So, the term, Jesus used to himself, the term, the Son of Man, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that he is merely a man. He was God who took the form of a, of a man to save his people as the Messiah, as the promised seed of Abraham. Again, I the son of man. He descended from heaven. He came from heaven. Therefore, he has pre-existence. Sa po'y meron ng pag-iral bago siya naging tao. First John, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, then verse 14. Clearly teaches, clearly points to us that before he became a man, he was God. Masayin po natin. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So he was in the beginning with God, and was God. This hindi pareho yan. Those are two persons in the nature of God. The Word with God and that Word was God. In other words, He has the same nature as the God who was with the Word. May makikita natin. So, parang Diyos yun. Yung verbo at yung Diyos na kasama ng verbo kanya. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold this glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So he came from heaven as in the nature of God, and he became a man in verse 14, the son of man. So he means be hindi lang sa tao. When he referred to himself as the son of man, he was not merely a man. He was God who took the nature of a man. The Son of Man. So, did as I say 9 verse 6, when I say prophesied about the coming Messiah, this is what he, this is what he wrote. Ito kanya sinula. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So, this is a, a son who is born. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So the son who was born to Israel was called Mighty God, Everlasting Father. So the Son of Man doesn't merely, doesn't merely say that Jesus was an ordinary man. He was more than an ordinary man because he was God who took the form of a man. The Son of Man. If the term Son of Man, if you follow the argument that because Jesus referred to himself as Son of Man means he was merely a man, if you follow that argument, if the term the Son of Man refers to his humanity, therefore he was a man, then the Son of God means he is God. If not, why not? Son of man means he was a man. He existed in the form of a man. Son of God means he is God. Diba? Parahum. Diba? If the, if the first term, son of man, means he was a man, and that is true, he became a man, therefore the son of God also means he is God. That is also true because he has dual nature. Romans chapter 9 verse 5 points to his dual nature. One is a temporary nature, and the one is his eternal nature. 
Romans chapter 9, verse 5. This is what we can read. Of whom are the fathers, O Israel, and from whom, according to the flesh, that is the temporal nature, he became, of, whom, uh, of whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, with overall, that's his eternal nature, with overall, the eternally blessed God, amen, he is eternal God. He took the temporary nature of being a man, the Son of Man. I hope that's clear, brethren. And the Son of the Son of Man, not a Son of Man, the Son of Man. That means it's a, it's a particular kind of a human being, because it was God taking the form of a of of a man, the Son of God. Second argument. If you like to study, pangalawang pagmamatwid na gusto nating pag-aralan, Jesus cannot be God because God is not a man. Jesus cannot be God because He existed in, as a human being or as a man because God is not a man. And they quote Hosea chapter 11 verse 9. I will next. I will not execute the fullness of my anger. I will not again destroy a frame, for I am God, not man. So because God said in Hosea, I am God and not man, therefore Jesus, who existed as a man, cannot be God. That's their argument. Yun ang kailang pagmamatuwid. Ituloy po natin. Let's continue 11 verse 9. The Holy One is in your midst, and I will not come with terror. When God said, I will not execute the fullness of my anger, He will not fully consume Israel. A remnant will return to Israel, where Jesus will come from. The remnant na bumalik sa Israel. Who is speaking? God is speaking. Is it the Father? He doesn't say. Hosea 11, 9 doesn't say the Father is speaking. It just says God is speaking. We cannot determine whether it is the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. It just says God. It is a pure assumption to say that it is the Father. The verse doesn't say that the, the one speaking is the Father. When the Jehovah's Witnesses tries tried to prove that the Father alone is God, and then they read verses stating God, they just assume what they need to prove. So we do not, the verse doesn't say the Father. It doesn't say that. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, except for the Holy Spirit, the term Father to refer to the Father and the term, the word Son, referring to Christ, are not found. We cannot read of the father-son relationship in the Old Testament. If you do, please cite me the text from the Old Testament. So it is not the father who is speaking. It is God who is speaking. Whether that's the father, son, the Holy Spirit, we do not know. It just says the God. God said. Now what's the context? The context is God will not consume Israel entirely like what a man will do. That is what God is saying. He will not consume Israel entirely. He will not. He will control his fury. A, a, a man who is angry sometimes cannot control his fury. But God is not a man, so he can't control his fury. Because he has a plan of sending his son coming from Israel. So God will not consume entirely Israel even if they sinned. natin. So, as we have mentioned, tulad na natin, John 1.14, God, the Word, the Son, took the nature of a man. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
when Hosea and God said, for, I'm, for I am God and not a man, the verse doesn't say that God cannot take the form of a man. Pagsabihin ng Panginoon na kung Diyos at di tao, hindi sinasabi ng talata ng Diyos ay hindi maaaring maging tao. Wala siya sinasabing gano'n, di ba? We just read in John chapter 1 verse 14 that yes, God can take the form of a man. Just like what Christ did. Yun ang ginawa ng ating Panginoon. He was in the form of God. He was with God in the beginning. But He took the form of a man. He became flesh and dwelt among us And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So God can take the form of a man. We may hit the nothing. Just because Jesus took the form of a man, doesn't mean that He is not God. He is God who took the form of a man. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. When I say the form of God, the nature as God, who is in the nature as God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming with the likeness of man. Some argue that the form means is not really a God. It's just in the form of God. Therefore, using the same argument, he is also not a bond servant because he took the form of a bond servant. The word form is also the same word form in the form of God. So if he, he wasn't God because he was in the form of God, therefore he's not a bond servant because he came in, in because he took the form of a bond servant. No. He was God. He took the you it took he became a bond servant, in other words. He took the nature of a bond servant. So he was God, who humbled himself, made himself of no reputation, and coming he came in the likeness of man. He became a man. So the verse Hosea, chapter eleven, verse nine, says God is not a man. That's true. But it doesn't say that God cannot take the form of a man. God did. Jesus did. It was God took the form of a man. God prepared the body for him. This is Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5, if I am not mistaken. Hindi ko nagkakamali. The body you have, you have prepared for me. Sabi rito. Verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, when he came into the world, He said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. So when he took the form of a man, God prepared the body for him. So, again, that argument is not true. Just because God is not a man and Jesus is a man, it doesn't mean that God cannot take the form of a man and retain, retain his Godhood. Colossians 2.9 Even when Jesus was in the form as a man, he still had the fullness of being a God. Colossians 2.9 For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The word Godhead means the state of being God. For in him dwells all the state of being, the, all the fullness of the state of being God bodily. While he was in the form of a man, At the same time, he was God. He was he still had the fullness of the state of being God. So did the one third argument. The Father is God and Jesus is Lord. Therefore, Jesus is not God. He is Lord, but he's not God. In the Old Testament, it is very clear, Mali now, that God is Lord. He is the Almighty who should be obeyed. He is Lord because He is the Master of all. He is called the Lord of hosts because He is the Master of all. So God is Lord. 
So God is called Lord God in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. This is the history of the heavens and earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. The Lord said to Abram, that's God. Genesis 15 verse 2, But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the hair of my house is Elisha of Damascus? He called God Lord God. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 27, Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I am, I will, I will am, but dust and ashes have taken, taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. When he was bargaining about Sodom and Gomorrah, he called God Lord. And Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So the argument falls that because Jesus is Lord, he's not God. Because God in the Old Testament was described both as Lord, Lord God or Lord. So saying he is Lord doesn't mean he is not God. The Lord God is the true God. We can read the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the terms God the Father, Lord, and Holy Spirit are used to designate the persons of the deity to show their corresponding functions in the salvation of man. It is in the New Testament where the persons of the Godhead are revealed. God, the Father is revealed, the Son as God is revealed, and the Holy Spirit as God is revealed. Not in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament it is revealed that the God is the Father with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6 says one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. There is only one God who is called Father. Why was he called Father? Because he was the one who begotten the Son to become a human, to become a man and sent him. He is also the one who adopted us as sons when we obeyed the gospel. Which the father of the Lord when he was in the when he was a man and also is our father in the sense that he adopted us as children as his sons so is God the father then there is one Lord Ephesians 4 6 4 5 says there is one Lord one faith one baptism there is only one Lord which master or we have the, all the authority Jesus is the one Lord. Why? Because all authority has been given to him. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to, him, to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He has all the authority. So he's the one Lord. In other words, God and the Holy Spirit gave the authority to the Lord, to the Jesus in terms of salvation. Jesus has all the authority in heaven and on earth in reference to salvation. Now there is one spirit, Ephesians 4.4. 4. There is one spirit. The term spirit, as we have studied previously, is sometimes used to those who reveal or teach. First, it is used of deceiving spirits. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the spirit expresses says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons the deceiving spirits they teach they taught the, the doctrines of demons the spirits the spirit taught doctrines of demons 1 john 4 1 talks about those spirits were not sent of god those who denied that Jesus came in the flesh. Now, oh, 1 Timothy 4.1, the 
First John chapter 4 verse 1. Verse 2. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So the spirits are the false prophets. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses or teaches that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And this and every spirit that, that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now and is now ready in the world. So, don't makita natin ng spirit ay nagtuturo. So we have one spirit, because it is the Holy Spirit who revealed and confirmed the truth. The Holy Spirit taught us the whole truth. Ay spirit santo nagturo sa atin sa buong kapatuhanan. John chapter 16, verse 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will, for he will not speak on His own authority, but, what, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit revealed and taught the whole truth to us. So He's our teacher, Liuba. The one teacher, the one who revealed the whole truth so if there is only one spirit the holy spirit because there is one spirit therefore the father and the son are not spirits yes they are but it is emphasized that there is one spirit because there is only one who revealed the truth and that's the holy spirit Christ did not. Christ taught during the three years that he was on the earth. After that, he did not teach. It is the Holy Spirit who, who did teach and revealed the whole truth. But God, both God and Jesus, are spirits because God is spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24, God's spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. When Paul said there is one spirit, he is not saying that the Father and the Son are not spirit. He's just saying there is one spirit who is the revealer and teacher of the truth. You know, sinasabi niya. That's what Paul is saying. If Jesus only is the Lord, does Paul, is Paul saying that the Father and the Spirit are not lords? Yes, they are. Because God is Lord God. If the Father is God, then the Holy Spirit is God. Therefore, they are lords, just like Jesus. But Jesus was specified as the one Lord because He alone has the whole authority in reference to salvation in heaven and on earth. And finally, if only the Father is God, this does Paul is saying or teaching that the, that the Spirit and Christ are not in the nature as God. We will prove later in our teaching tonight that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all exist as God. They are in the nature as God. We will prove that later on. So, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are those who compose the Lord God, the true God. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And some argue in John 14 verse 28 Jesus said the Father is greater than Jesus. Because the Father is greater than Jesus, therefore Jesus is not God. That's their argument. But that's a false argument. John 14 verse 28 you have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Now, question, why did Jesus said that the Father is greater than him? Because 
when he was in the form of a man, he humbled himself. He lowered himself voluntarily. But before he became a man, he was equal with God. Same for nothing. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of, of a one servant, and coming in the likeness of men, in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So the Father was greater than Jesus when Jesus was a man because he humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. He did not make his equality with God as a reason not to obey his Father. American Standard Version in verse 6. Who existing, who existing in the form of God, did counted not counted not the being on an equality with God the thing to be grasped. Hindi niya ginong pangahawakan na wag siyang sumunod sa mga sa pagkasali, pantay. Jesus did not say, why are you sending me for we are just equal? He did not use that as a reason. So while Jesus was a man he made a little lower than the angels so during those times the father is greater than jesus but when he returned to the to heaven he returned to his former glory john chapter 17 verse 5 while he was in the form of a man he made himself under the control of his father he obeyed his father Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, though he was a son, he had to learn obedience by the things which is sub. He was a son. He was equal with the father. And yet he, be, he became obedient to all the things that the father commanded him. So just John chapter 17 verse 5. Yes, the father is the true God, just like the son. Let us read John 17 verse Four and five. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. What's what what was the glory? The same as the Father was God. So because he voluntarily humbled himself. Put himself under the control of his father. Therefore, his father is greater than him in the, on that during that point. But when he, he returned to heaven, he is equal to the father again. He took the glory which he had with the father before the world was. They also argue that because the father sent the son, therefore the one who is sending is greater than the one sent. So therefore. Christ cannot be God. John 13, verse 16, Most assuredly, most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor he, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. So God the Father sent Jesus, and therefore Jesus cannot be greater than his Father. Yes, that's true. Yet, again, yet when he, had, he has accomplished his work, he is commanding the Father to give back the glory which he had with the Father before the world was. Say nothing to this. John 12, 17, verse 1 to 5. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the, the hour has come. Glory for his son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent i have glorified you on the earth i have finished the work which you have given me to do and now our father glorify me together with yourself with the glory which i had with you before the world was so when did God glorify the Son? 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Ye have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The fathers referred to his son as God, your throne of God. The same glory as the father, who is also God. So they are equal. When God, the, the, the Son returned to heaven, he, was, he went back to the same equality with his Father because they both are in the nature of being God. Pareho silang Dios, mga pati. The next argument, God cannot be tempted, but Jesus was tempted, therefore is not God. But, James chapter 1 verse 13, this is, what the, this is the verse that they use. Let no one say it when he's tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. God cannot be tempted. God cannot sin. Because he cannot be tempted. Now, when Jesus was tempted, did he sin? Because if you are tempted, then you will sin. So when Satan tempted Jesus, did he sin? No, he did not sin. It's like the father. He cannot tempt the father to sin. Jesus also was tempted and he did not sin. I say nothing. Matthew 4 verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Was the devil successful in tempting him? Did Jesus sin when Satan tempted tempted him he did not he did not sin jesus did not succumb to his temptation he did not bite into his temptation do you know so just like god who cannot be tempted and sin jesus also cannot be tempted and sin when he was tempted by satan this this was done to prove what Isaiah said what God said in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sheer foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. So God laid in Zion a stone a, a, a stone for a foundation, a rock, a tried a stone, a precious cornerstone. Who is that? That's Jesus. So when Satan tempted Jesus and did not sin, he proved that is the tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. This proves why the Father is well pleased with him. Bakit nagagalak ang ama sa kanyang anak? Matthew 3, 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He is well pleased. Satan, uh, Jesus proved while the Father is well pleased with him. He was tempted but did not sin. So again, that argument falls. When Jesus, when was Jesus tempted? When he was in the form of a man. That's when Satan tempted him. But if he were in the form as a God, Satan cannot, do, cannot be able to do that. Next argument, God cannot die. But Jesus died, and so Jesus is not God. Yes, he did die. That's true, he did die. But did he remain dead? An ordinary human being, when he, when he dies, he will remain dead. Because he has no power over death. Jesus did not remain dead because he has the power over death. Matthew 16, verse 18. 
when God, when Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or Hades or Hades, whatever is the pronunciation. And I also say to you that you are Peter, Petrus, a small feeble. And on this rock, Petra, a big rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or Hades shall not prevail against it. The power of death cannot prevail over Jesus because he has power over death. He, he resurrected from, from the dead. He resurrected from the dead. Jesus, John chapter 2 verse 18 proves that. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? You do these things. What sign are you going to show to us? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his, of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Jesus the man died. But not Jesus the God. Kailangan nating unawain na siya may dalawang kalikasan. Isang pasamantala at isang mulanggang kalikasan. He existed in, in to dual nature. A temporary nature and a Eternal nature. Romans 9 5. Of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came with overall the eternal of death, God. Amen. Kaya sa nagkatawang tao, para mamatay siya. Upang mapatawad tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Kaya namatay siya. But Jesus the God cannot die. There is only one God. And so if Jesus is also God, then we have two gods, the Father and the Son. But this argument is a misunderstanding of many things. Number one, the word one doesn't, doesn't always mean one in number. Ang salitang isa, hindi ibig sabihin, palaging isa sa bila. Sometimes, it means one in being united. Kumisan, ibig sabihin, kayo nagkakaisa. Kayo isa, dahil kayo nagkakaisa. You are one because you are united as one. So, Genesis chapter 24 is an example. Ang isang alimbawa, as a Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall live his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Question. When a man and a woman marry, pag nag sila, will they, cease be, will they cease to be two persons? and be just one person. Pag nag-asawa bang isang lalaki at isang babae, hindi na sa dalawang tao, kundi isang tao na lang sila. May hindi totoo. And that's not true. So what does one flesh mean? Simply means they are united as husband and wife. They remain two, but they are united as one. One name, one dwelling place, one treasury, one purpose. They are united as a husband and wife. So in that sense, they are one flesh. But not one in number. So the number, word number one, or the word one, can mean you are one because you are being united as one. Not one in number. So the same with the true God. The true God is not one person. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hero of Israel, the Lord, why is WH, our God, the Lord is one. Why is WH is one? Hero of Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The word God in this verse is Elohim. And Elohim literally means gods. It is a plural noun. Example, Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. You shall have no other God. Before me, you shall not have other God before me. The word gods in this verse is Elohim. The same word in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. 
Elohim. It's a plural noun. So that means when we translate literally in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our gods, the Lord is one. In other words, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our gods, the Lord is unitedly one. So ito yung nagkakaisa. They are, one, they are not one person, but persons who are united as one. There are verses in the Old Testament that will tell us that there is, on, there is more than one Lord. That means there are more than one person in the Godhead. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8, and verse 10, verse 11. For thus says the Lord of hosts, so, sino nagsasalita? We're speaking the Lord of hosts. He sent me after glory. And there's also another verse that says sometimes the one sending and the one being sent are the same. They are equal. He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he will touch us, you touch us, the, the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil of for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. The Lord of hosts is speaking, but he will be sent by the Lord of hosts. How many Lord of hosts? We are two, at least in this verse. Continue, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming. And I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. The Lord is saying, speaking. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. The Lord speaking, and he's sent by the Lord of hosts. How many lords? Two lords. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 12. So I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they will walk up, they will walk up, they will walk up and down in his in his name, says the Lord. The Lord is speaking, will strengthen them in the Lord. I mean the Lord. Two lords, the one speaking, the one will strengthen them. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 12. God was sent by the Lord God in his spirit. Isaiah 48, verse 12. Listen to me, Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first. I am also the last. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. All of you assemble yourselves and hear. Who among, who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall do his pleasure in Babylon, and his, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, I have spoken, yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Come near to me. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, I was there, and now the Lord God and Spirit have sent me. The one who is speaking in, the, in verse 12 is God. I am he, I am the first, and I am the last. I am the first and the last always refers to God. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, and we read, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. So God was speaking. The God was speaking, was sent by the Lord God and his Spirit. So how many persons? God was speaking, and the Lord God and the Spirit was sent him. This proves God is not one person. Genesis 1.26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The God is the Lord of hosts. He has dominion over all things. Man is similar because he has dominion over all things on earth. And so God created man in his 
in the in the image and according to his like to whom God was talking to sino ang kausap ng Diyos who are the who, to persons who are like him God was talking to persons who are like him who possess the same image as him so yung kausap niya pareho niya sino sila who are they who created with the Father John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God it was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing nothing was made that was made the word later on Jesus identified as Jesus was in the beginning was with God created all things the Holy Spirit also created Psalms 104 and verse 30 you sent forth your spirit they are created and you renew the face of the earth Job chapter 33 verse 4 the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life so the Father with the Son and the Spirit created all things so when God said that let's make man in our image he was talking to two other persons who like him are in the nature of being God who like him has the power to create so Jesus is God John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of the father the Holy Spirit is God but Peter said, Ananias, why has son filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not uh, in your own control? Why has you conceived this thing in your heart? He have not lied to men, but to God. Verse 3 says, he lied to the Holy Spirit. He didn't lie to the Son or to the Father. He lied to the Holy Spirit specifically. Verse 4, he did not lie to men but to God. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is God. First premise. He, did, he lied to the Holy Spirit. Minor premise. He did not lie to men. He did not lie to men but to God. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is God. That's logical. The first statement is true. He lied to the Holy Spirit. The second straight statement is true. He did, not, he did not lie to God, to men, but to God. Therefore, the conclusion is correct. The Holy Spirit is God. Well, the Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. They are three different persons. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Son. There are three different persons existing in the same nature of God, and they are united as God. That's the true God, the united one, unitedly one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are united in name and authority. In Matthew 28, verse 19, baptize them in the name or the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They, they have one eternal purpose, to save man. They are one in nature, God, but they have different functions to perform in saving man. So, just because there is one God, doesn't mean that God is only one person. The Father is God, Jesus is God, Holy Spirit is God. All three persons are the united the one God of the Scriptures, the true God, the Lord God of the Old Testament. So, that's the, all the arguments that they use to prove allegedly that Jesus is not God but mere man but that is not true the scripture teach 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 that Jesus is God he was in the beginning with the with, with God and he was God but he took he became flesh and took the nature of a man after he has accomplished all the things that God the Father has commanded him he ascended back into heaven and took the and went back to his glory as God. The same with the Father, the same with the Holy Spirit. So ito po ang ating pag-aaral sa gabing ito. 
Uh, thank you very much for listening. Dagang, dagang salamat sa inyong pagpaminaw. Daka salamat kay kaya kayong pamakaramda. Ibang lingwa, hindi ko nalala. So, uh, I hope this, this um, what we have studied tonight will help us in answering those false arguments that allegedly allegedly proved that Jesus is not God but a mere man. So, maraming sa lahat mga kapatid. Ito ang ating pag-aaral sa gabing ito.
his rest. Take away the love of sinning. Take our load of guilt away. In the work of thy beginning, bring us to eternal Ano po? Kung gusto niyo mapahingan yan, punta kayo sa John Rogers Acapella Hymns sa uh, YouTube. Dahil pong awit dyan, mga awit na puri, na pwede nating kantahin, pag-aralan sa ating uh, pagsamba. Uh, those who were commented, nagbigay po ng comments, Leonito Turaliza, yan po ang ating magiting na kaibigan, tagal na nating kaibigan po ito, Uh, isang, ito po yung mga kapatid na talagang makikita natin ng pagnanasang mga aral na po, hindi lang sana mga kadahilanan. Na ibang Arabi, kata kay Amin Kakabsa. Ang sabihin niya, sa ilungan po yan, maganda gabi sa inyong lahat, mga kapatid. Roy Bebs Kapili, good evening po. Rex Navarro Gumanay, good evening broad. Noel Tanyana, ito po ang ating Kaibigat kapatid na uh, maaaral sa Dasmarinas, Cavite. Magandang gabi po. Uh, Jocelyn Valiente, good evening po. Maria Cherry David, ito po ay kapatid sa Santa Ana, Church of Christ, Santa Ana, Pampanga. Good evening po. Bilmar, Jaymar, magandang gabi po. John Bautista, ito rin po ang ating kaibigat uh, kasama sa um, fighting the good part of the faith. Hello to all. Anthony Reyes, Maupay nga gabi eh, mga kabugtoan ko kan Kristo. Ito po ay waray. Ano po? Waray po ito. Watching from Abuyog, Leyte, Eastern Visayas. Ito ay kompleto. Ito ay kompleto. Fight. Magandang gabi po. Romilin Rawado. Hindi po nang kakamili. Ano po ito? Taga Camarena Sur. Magandang gabi po. Ninong Lord ni Shalwa. Ayan ako at saksal to. Got sent. Sumagil Gaba. Good evening brethren. Lito lang ang lito lang ang lale. Good evening po sa lahat. Lenlen Estorges watching po sana Suntobi Christian po. So sana panalayan natin. Jonathan Gonzales, maayong gabi. Ingsoon sa Lunga, Lord sa Lunga watching from home. Sirelo Sumabal, ito po 'yung kaibigan natin at magiting na mga ngalan at taga Leyte. Sirelo Sumabal, good evening po. Genial Lair, good evening. Mara Cherry David, God bless po. God bless din po. O, yun po nga mga bumati sa ating pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you very much to all who listen and watch our Facebook Live about more arguments about Jesus, uh, proving that Jesus is not God, allegedly. So tayo po ay maghihiwalay sa pamagitan ng isang uh, panalangin. Pero dito po sa aking uh, cellphone, Iba po ang technology. Sa self ko, nakikita po yung nanonood kahit hindi nagko-comment. Masayin natin. Uh, yun pa. 
Karelia Piusong. Ito po ay kaalip sa angin ay susuwatching. Eusebio Alagano, sigurad po alagay ito sa Gandabaw, is watching. Bernard, Bernardo Gomweda is watching. Tapos, Danny Baliling is watching. Cherry Lozano Lopez, nag-remember po sa Kabanatuan, is watching. May makita mo sa cellphone eh. Richard Dionisio, uh, kaya kasama po natin sa Mab Angeles, is watching. Uh, Meka Makarila is watching. Lichelle Lich Lich Dechetor Stalio is watching. Lenlen Estorg is watching. Sana maging Christiano ka lang, Lenlen. God sent Sumag is watching. Uh, pero makita na, eh, makita natin dito. Sheldon Lenin Neniel is watching. Jotan Gonzalez is watching. Ramiro Campo, member po sa akin, is watching. Uh, Daniel Sikat, taga Mindoro, is watching. Dami po eh. O John Ocampo, taga Dubai, is watching. Daniel Lin, is watching. Yan yan. So, thank you very much. Maraming salamat po sa mga nakikinig at nakikipagal po sa atin sa ating Facebook Live. Dami po yung manalangin. Ang banal, sana po ay uh, ang aming pag-aaral sa gabing ito ay naging kapakipakinabang. Dagdag po sa aming kalaman, panlaban sa maling aral. Ninisin po nyo kayong mga puso, Diyos, na bigyan nyo kami ng dalisay na puso, na katotohanan lamang um, ang dodoon, ang pagnanasang kami makarating sa langit. Uwasan po nyo kami sa namang tukso o kadahilanan upang hindi kami mahiwalay po kami sa inyo, Diyos. Na aming mga ilaga, ilaga ka aming pag-iisip sa bagay na sa taas, mag, mag, mag sa mga bagay sila ng lupa. Patawaan nyo kami ama sa aming mga pagkakamali. At nawa yung mga kapatid namin na kakasala, na sana po ay buksan na kailang kaisipan at magbalik sa inyo Diyos na sila maglingkod ng dalisay at sila magmanatili po sa kailang pag-asa ng buhay na wala hanggang. Dinadalangin namin na ngayon pamahalaan o Diyos na sana ay Sila'y makapamahala na maayos upang katiwasayang kapayapaan manatili sa aming bayan at tumo kami manatili maglingkod sa buong katiwasayan at kapayapaan. Sana po kami magtagumpay sa aming pangaral sa mga taong wala pa sa aming kaharihan. Makatagpo kami mga taong bukas ang puso at kaisipan. Bigyan niyo kami ng kasipagan na aming mga paa na andang ipangaral ang ibang heli. At ang mga bangit ay aming hiningi. Dakilang pangal sa Kristo. Amen. Amen mga patid. God bless. Mag-ingat po tayo. Alala po sa ulan. Uh, hindi pa tapos sa ulan dahil yung pong bag bagyong umalis na, si Enteng, napakalakas na po ngayon. Naging typhoon na po siya talaga. Nasa West, Phil West Philippine Sea papuntang China at Vietnam. Pero inihigop pa niya yung abagat. Kaya nandun pa rin yung mga pag-ulan. So tayo po mag-ingat mga patid. Magandang gabi. <music>